Okay, here we go, ladies and welcome to what week ten of ECW. And now I know that we recorded the Easter pre show which was metal. We recorded that what two days ago? My initial plan was to upload Easter yesterday, but that just didn't happen. Anyway I'm gonna upload it today. Luckily I didn't do a voiceover for the past few days, so I just, just wasn't in the mood also I'm still kinda of sick. But we're gonna quickly get over as yes, here tonight. Champion versus champion action as your East Day champion Suzuki Bells against your ECW hardcore lightweight champion Neville in one on one non tile action contest. I know that's the WWF lightweight title, but since I'm too lazy to like bother and, and try and create a custom tile, we're just going to use the WWF lightweight tile they had in the add to there as the East Day hardcore lightweight tile for now. Anyway, that's one of the matches, and well, another one definitely going to be a blockbuster one. Your main event. Number one contenders for the what? East Side Tevin's Championship? No, the East Side Hardcore Lightweight, I believe. Shane Douglas goes in a triple threat matchup against Pengun Dark and Y2J Chris Jericho. This is Shane Douglas' debut here in ECW. I'm not sure if Shane Douglas was actually ever a lightweight. Well, you know, like the standards of the weight class, I guess. I was I'm not fully sure on that one, but we're just gonna put him inside a trip that just for you to put him. Also we're gonna have a whole lot of debuts as you guys have seen in this thumbnail. We got Christopher Daniels, we got Low Key, we got Keith Lee, and we got Shane Douglas. Four new superstars who are um coming over here to East Day as one of those one of those debuts happening right now. Christopher Daniels and Low Key, we had them in the TNA universe. No, not TNA universe, um well, of course, TNA, because they were a part of TNA roster back then. But we did have them a part of the GWE universe. I believe Christopher Daniels had an Incarnotel shot against Finn Balor in the GWE universe mode we used to do. So, yeah, that was cool. And low-key, I believe he got a Chris Waitel shot against Rey Mysterio in that universe. And it was both at the No Surrender preview, I believe. I did delete some matches from it due to copyright. Although I could have just... Not worried about since it was deadly copyright, and I've realized that now. So no way I could cover that, I guess. So that's that. Sadly, as I'm trying to see the rest of the match card. Of course, we have the BWO, the Blue WO, also known as Steven Richards, and the Blue Meanie. Of course, they are a tag team. They have not been doing well. We haven't we we haven't had them all that much here in ECW. Most because East Day probably has, I think, to me, the most stacked roster. I base it off what I think each superstar would do and what their role would be for each um, universe stuff of that. So, of course, we need some East Day originals on East Day, in which we do. Doing East Day original, I believe we don't have on East Day, is Rhino. He's busy doing some of Heat Slater and their tag team over on SmackDown. So, that's that. So, Christian Daniels Loki versus the BWOs right now. Next up, we're going to have Keith Lee going one on one with Rose Clay. This is Keith Lee's debut, so that should be a good one, I guess. It's going to be so it's going to be slow paced since both of them are two huge men. Not going to be as probably fast paced as Abyss as Strowman's since Strowman's actually somewhat fast paced Abyss. Eh, so rough. Keith Lee and Rose Clay, not all that much, so it's going to be a more boring type matchup for that one compared to Abyss versus Braun Strowman. Steve Richards almost had the victory against Christopher Daniels there. Blue Mini almost picked up a victory against Low Key there. This is a war matchup. Well, a simultaneous matchup. Don't hook suplex from Blue Mini. That's Fincher. He's going to go and pin Low Key. Christopher Daniels, basically Steve Richards, and that was close to a three count there. Now the roles are now switched as we got Steve Richards and Low Key and Christopher Daniels versus Blue Meanie this time. Never mind, roles are back to being normal. Okay, this is just getting so, so confusing now. Blue Meanie almost has Christopher Daniels. Now Daniels with the pin. And that was it. Nailed that German suplex. Wasn't sure if that was going to be it there. Blue Meanie kicked now in the last second. Or just probably half of a second too late. Anyway, Christopher Daniels and Loki, they win their tag team debut here on ECW. Quick matchup, of course, since ECW always won, they always want to be quick, I guess. So, that's that. So. Okay, don't mind, I have a blank moment. Alright, so. Keith Lee and Bros. Clay, up next. After this, we're also going to have Taz. 1-1 one, one against the Hurricane, Gregory Helms. So, of course, Helms, he's our resident ECW jobber. Until he's able to win a matchup, we shall push him. But until then, 
gonna wait for a CPU to make him win the matchup himself. So that shall be that. Anyway, Keith Lee and Bros Clay, look at the look at these two gigantic just brutes, I guess. Bros Clay, here's a monster. Keith Lee the more lovable type, I guess. But still could get the job done inside the ring. Amazing wrestling talent and ability. And for a big man, he definitely does have some athletic ability. Sadly, you can't do sadly you can't do suicide dives in this game. So that that kinda sucks. Cause if I was able to well, of course you could do it in Wrestling Illusion 3D, but if I was able to do it in the 2D version, Keith Lee will have a suicide dive and a moonsault. Well, I believe Keith Lee already has a moonsault, I'm not sure. But, yeah. Move set in real life, basically. The Bros. Clay has Keith Lee up. Nails that gorilla press slam right in through the glass. Keith Lee could be done already here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's not a good debut. Bros. Clay making quick work of the rookie. Simple. Throw into the glass plane. And just like that, Keith Lee immediately losing his debut. I'm not sure how quick that was, but I bet a match that definitely is going to be quicker. Taz and Gregory Elms. Anyway, speaking of that, here we go. The matchup, exactly. Hurricane, Gregory Helms, Shane Helms, whatever you want to call him, but since he's dressed up as the Hurricane, but we're going to call him Gregory Helms. And well, this man, Taz, you're... Former ECW Hardcore Television Champion. As we did have Taz win it. He was the first ever Eastern Hardcore Television Champion. Then Omega won it at the Life of Never Sheep pay-per-view pre-show. And so Taz can try to get back into the ranks. Although he does have the three inch claws. He has not used it yet. But here tonight. Face off against Rogery Helms. Let's see how... Long Helms could survive here, and if he could survive any longer than Keith Lee, I'm not even sure how long that match was, or how short it was. Wait, I mean, that's that task. Has him up and nails that Samoan drop into a Bridget suplex. Greg Helms through the glass plane, and wow, this glass plane. No mercy being shown by the glass. Bros Clay, you see the feats Keith Lee with that Taz. That's the same thing with Gregory Helms. I believe that Taz and Gregory Helms matchup was super duper more quick than the other one. Than Keith Lee versus Bros Clay. Well, good thing we now added five matches back into East Oi. Before East Oi started off with five matches. Then we shrunk it down to four just for the use of doing something in Vave, I guess. But then we've risen it up back to five just for use of getting, of getting longer episodes. But as you see here, it's usually up to the 20 minute time limit. Even with the five matches. Like the... Like before when we did four and stuff, so yeah, that that's kind of bad. But anyway, here we go. Champion versus champion action. Neville, your Easter hardcore lightweight champion against Easter champion Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki, he is still a newbie here in ECW, but he has already won the Easter championships. That says a whole lot of stuff. So yeah, stuff in itself. I'm really making a statement as soon as he came here. Mean to get the towel shot and maybe win the towel against Baron Corbin. So that's that. Anyway, now Neville, he's actually had more matches and more wins than Minoru Suzuki. Well, Minoru Suzuki he has won, I believe Minoru Suzuki has won all his matches here in East Stoy. Well, besides the the house show that we did with the Cruiserweight Champion from SmackDown, Seth Rollins, against well your East Stoy Champion Minoru Suzuki Rollins, he won that one. So SmackDown defeated East Stoy on the house show. But the house show doesn't have no storyline, so that necessarily doesn't count to no storyline-wise things for that. Until we probably get up into, like, bragging rights or something like that. Or Battleground or Survivor Series. So I'm going to book that, I guess. And, you know, Neville has Suzuki stunned. Now it's the Hercarana. This one could maybe be it, probably. No, only one count. Suzuki, more tougher. That Neville probably thought there. I mean, he goes for a pin after her cry. Either that or that. Or now he was just desperate. He knows he's got to put away Mr. Suzuki very fast here. Suzuki ain't necessarily, ain't necessarily one of the good guys here. If anything, very dangerous. Now, if anything, I would say he's a tweener. He's not a face. He's not a heel. I would say he's a tweener. He's in between the face and the heel. But necessarily a very bad attitude, very dangerous. You could legit be scared of Minoru Suzuki in real life, to be fair. As until that line tamer. No, he quickly got out of that. I'm not sure if him and Chris Jericho had a matchup here in East Side. 
I think I think they've met in like a triple threat field for a matchup. I know Tinder's matchup for some, I think. There we go, Suzuki. Needs to watch out for Nell as steer there the chair that Nell has. Suzuki he could get he could grab that other chair. Also table in the ring, but now Neville, upper hand. On Suzuki until fifth for that remember, no rope breaks, this is ECW. Everything hardcore, everything extreme, so that's that. Now Suzuki, he actually was he was gonna hit Neville with that steel chair. Now Neville has him up, nails that power bomb into a Bridget suplex. Can this one be it? Neville almost had the victory. To kick out to Suzuki, very tough competitor. Which is why he's their East Third champion. He almost had that Dragon Sleeper type suplex, I think. I right, doubt that was gonna be a regular Dragon Sleeper. Turn who did he take from now to Mr. Suzuki? Suzuki's head bouncing straight off the steel chair and the red arrow by Neville. Pin him. He did not pin him. Kid, what are you doing? Well, of course, Suzuki's a veteran in wrestling. Neville, not necessarily all that much a rookie. He does have experience, but, you know, just in the fact that. I don't, I don't know. I had a point. But now he has been here longer than Miro Suzuki here in ECW wise. But I think our wrestling promotion wise, Suzuki's been here longer, I guess. Neville until Camel Clutch. I'm Miro Suzuki. Suzuki not doing so well in this matchup, surprisingly. Your ECW hardcore lightweight champion bringing a fight to your ECW champion. I see Suzuki carries her back suplex. Just like that, this win Suzuki could be as dangerous when his opponent is grounded. Dangerous to mission holds like that line tamer that he now has applied to the man that gravity forgot Neville. But of course, Mr. Suzuki making sure that gravity does remember Neville as he's making sure that gravity keeps Neville grounded and away off of those ropes or turnbuckles. Or just away from off his feet and making sure that his feet stay on that mat in general. Basically what Mr. Suzuki has to do throughout this matchup. Not her crown from Neville. Like I said, high flying ability. Suzuki did not keep Neville off his feet. Well, he did not keep Neville's feet onto the mat. Once Neville's feet leaves that mat, what if it's just a simple jump like that miss shooting start press? The Avenge Crazy come and see right there an explosion. Well, that was something. Suzuki, he landed right through that table. And Neville, he just went flying on the outside of the ring. Suzuki, he's up. Neville, he's also up. Ladies and gentlemen. Both these men, no selling that. They quick, they got up in quick type fashion, I guess. And now Camel Clutch from Neville. Suzuki almost countered into that back suplex until now countered midway of that said back suplex. And now a Dragon Seeper suplex from Neville into the pin on Suzuki. Suzuki kicked now at one. Didn't even feel the effects of that at all until Sharpshire now. Neville, precarious position. Not doing so well, but he does get out of it. Suzuki now, oh never mind, Suzuki got cop. Now, well, oh, I was about to say a troll code from Suzuki, but then now easily countering. It's going to be a little bit difficult to call the action with those kind of quick counters. Fishman suplex from Neville. This is a hell of a matchup so far in Bulldog. Neville, he's doing very, very well in this matchup. So is Suzuki, but at this point, it's pretty back and forth, pretty lopsided at some points. Where either Neville just is going to make Suzuki look like a jobber, or a job, or, um, now, Jobber makes Jobber look like a Jobber, but um, Suzuki will make Neville look like a Jobber. And there's Gemma Neville. Did he make Suzuki tap out? There's Gemma, I think Neville just did. Your ECW Hardcore Lightweight Champion has just defeated your ECW World Heavyweight Champion. Neville has defeated Mary Suzuki. Suzuki not necessarily having a good week here in Europe's mode. Lost to Cruiserweight Champion Seth Rollins in that house show. But of course, house shows, they will have no story nights. That won't go into Europe's mode. It's just for use of hand matches. But this one will go into a storyline, hopefully. Or that was just a one-off. We don't know. Well, at least I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. Do I? I think I probably booked this ahead in advance of these results. Yeah, I have. Never mind. Anyway, triple threat action, no contenders for the ECW Hardcore Lightweight Championship. Chris Jericho, Penny on Dark, and this man, the debuting Shane Douglas, the franchise Shane Douglas. So this should definitely be a good matchup. Like I said, I'm not sure if Shane Douglas was ever actually, um, I guess, say, not cruiserweight type, because we're keeping this at 220-pound weight limit, for example. I guess... For example, in the cruiserweight division, Seth Rollins, he's like, what, he was like 217 pounds? 
but then Warriors can keep the Chris Weight title at like a 220 pound weight limit. So, for example, Dolph Ziggler, he's also like what? Ziggler was like 218 pounds, I guess. So, like, Ziggler could be um, classified for the Chris Weight title division, but ne- necessarily. I don't know. We shall see. I'm trying to see if Shane Douglas was actually ever a cruiserweight. WCW NWA World Heavy Champion. Born November 1st, 1964. 53 currently. Okay, that, that's important, I guess. Okay, fine. Here we go. Shane Douglas. 6 foot 1. Build weight 244 pounds. Okay, 111 kg. What does that mean? Kilograms again? I I think. Okay, there. 244 pounds for Shane Douglas. Okay, so this is out of the window. Fine, but I guess we should make this, what, ECW Hardcore Television Championship, since I just realized my mistake. I just put Shane Douglas in here because in the game, he looks like a, he looks like a Chris Bay type, but to be fair, when I have seen matches of him in real life, I guess, which is probably only like two matches, I guess. That didn't necessarily look like a lightweight, but in this game, it makes me think he's a lightweight. All right, where? We're going to still make him challenge for the ECW lightweight championship if he does win this matchup. Of course, Chris Jericho and Penguin Dark, they are the accurate ones. I see right there the strength of Shane Douglas just to throw both Jericho and Dark over, well, his own head with that bye bye suplex. And now, well, there goes the dangerousness of Penguin Dark matching. If we have a matchup between Dark and. Um, I was about to say Dark and Jericho, but no, Dark and Miro Suzuki, that definitely not going to be necessarily a good matchup to see. Not going to be kid-friendly, going to be probably freaking bro. Should we make a first blood matchup? That'd be cool. Anyway, fine, that's the ECW main event. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I already have things planned out for ECW in advance. I already have ECW Week 11 planned out due to the results of this matchup. Of all these matchups, to be fair. So let's see. Yeah, yeah, I have metal planned out. Okay. I got a tag team Murphy. I'm gonna start playing now. It's gonna be booked the same way we're booking the SmackDown tag team Murphy. I guess. Not for SmackDown tag titles, but I guess say normal tenders tag titles matchup. Then I have all this planned out, yada yada. Non title, non title. Okay. Pretty decent. Do I have East Day Week 12 planned out? I need book superstars for week 11. I haven't booked that yet. GM mode. Hold up. GM mode here. The GM mode after Judgment Day. I guess. I don't have anything booked for week 12 or anything. Okay. So anyway. And there you go. An Ace Crusher. Or also known as the Face Cutter. From Shane Douglas to Penguin Dark. That was truly out of nowhere. No pun there. Ran Yorn there. I just noticed that it kind of was what's supposed to be. Figure for luck from the franchise. On the Penguin Dark and Jericho. He completely missed that moonsault. Try this again. Second time's charm. With that moonsault. Well, I guess you could say Lion Salt, sort of. Not necessarily went off the ropes with that, but still. I guess you could say it counts. Shane Douglas now. Not doing so well against Jericho and Dark. Okay, never mind. Douglas, the franchise, he's back up. Penguin Dark, of course, the dangerous competitor. Same like Mirosuke. Jericho, he just doesn't care about this matchup here. Just going to take out a stretcher. Shane Douglas, Jericho on top of the stretcher. And what just happened right there? Jericho nails the moonsault. Perfectly placed opportunity. Nails the moonsault off of the stretcher to Shane Douglas. And there goes Douglas. Right through the table. Over the top of the rope and out of the ring. Shane Douglas. Learning what it's like to be back here in ECW. You can tell he probably has a little bit of ring rust here. Sabu and Sandman. RVD, I guess they have a little bit of ring rust as well. Because the young tents, they're getting some shots here. Well, Chris Jericho, not necessarily a young talent, but still. Still, I guess. He's not all that rusty like the RE Study Originals, I guess. And there you go. Shindo is simply taking down Jericho. This one could be with the side rush next sweep through the foldable chair, putting on Dark. The CPU making Dark look like an idiot. Shane Douglas pins Chris Jericho off of that side rush and leg sweep. Into the pin, and then Penguin Dark. He misses the chance to break it up at the count of one. Then for a count of two and three, he just grabs the football chair, tries to do some 
Not able to put down time. Not able to break up the count. Oh my god. CPUs made Pentagon Dark look like a, like a complete idiot. I was about to say a stupid idiot, but Jericho did not win the matchup. Well, I guess Jericho will call Dark a stupid idiot after a matchup. Then we'll set up a matchup between Dark and Jericho. I'm kidding. But now thinking about that, I guess that could actually kind of happen. But now we have things booked in advance for week 12. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this episode of ECW. This was week 10. I noticed I forgot to say the location because I forgot to give a location. A random location from a generator for Ross Matt on ECW and Superstars episodes. Okay, that, that kind of sucks. So anyway, next episode of New Year's Mode. We're going to kick things off with SmackDown's pre-show. Velocity. Hopefully, I could upload it today. I know for like the past two episodes of Universe Mode, I've said I was going to be able to upload Velocity and SmackDown. As soon as I upload the R1s and stuff, that's kind of been difficult. Okay, and this cold is very, very much annoying. Okay, anyway. So, that was it. Next episode of Universe Mode will be Velocity, then SmackDown, then Superstars. And then the same thing all over again as we kick things off with Raw Week 11. And we're going to have Heat to kick things off us for Raw, then the regular Raw, then Metal, then East Today, then Velocity, then SmackDown, stuff like that. Superstars all over again, stuff like that. And thank you guys for watching this episode of Universe Mode. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>